you graduated from Oxford University. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Can you share your most memorable experience from your time there? My most memorable experience is, well, lifestyle-wise. I really miss just going out in sweats and with my hair up and being able to like chill at a, at a cafe and just work on my essay. So kind of like the quiet and very, like very chill lifestyle. And, but in terms of academics, I really miss just having like the one-on-one -on -one or like two-on-one -on -one, um, classes because you know I really I really could discuss anything that I wanted to with the professor. Um, moving to live in a new environment must have taken some getting used to. Yeah. What were some of the things that you did to cope with the changes and also ease the transition? What I what I did was I brought so many. Kind of so many Indonesian food there, so I brought like ri a rice cooker with me. I, you know, I brought I don't know, you know, one of those. I brought all the sambal and all the all the little beef shredded beef, like every everything that would remind me of home. And I would also call my parents and my close ones often. Um, but other than that, you know, it, it I really enjoyed my time there. There wasn't. There wasn't that much adapting that I had to do. Um, yeah, like I just really enjoyed it. What were some of the biggest challenges in studying abroad? Like, I think the, one of the most challenging thing was just having to cope with new standards. Um, because I went to a university where I think everyone is at their best. Like, they're all very alpha, you know? So, it would, just to be average, I would really need to struggle to, to stay um, at the same standard as everybody else. So I think it was it was a standard. Um, and so let's take a few steps back. Um, yeah. Oxford University is a dream university for so many people. Mm -hmm. What are your top tips to getting into that? My top tips. Um, my first tip would probably be to do your research um, and really really aim for the grades that you need to get there to apply even. Um, so just be very well prepared and then work hard for the grades that you need. And other than that, write a really good essay, do multiple drafts and um, also work on your interview. But most of all, just make sure that you're very passionate about your subject. I think more than anything, they, they are looking for students that are passionate about what they are going to study and they know what about the subject excites them the most and they just want to see the way you think and the way um, yeah the way you think and the way you analyze a problem so that's really it. Yeah. Uh, do you plan on pursuing further studies? Yeah yeah I'm definitely thinking of doing my master's degree but maybe maybe in a year or two so we'll see. Down, while I Um, this is a new sound um, from your previous music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you were heavily involved in making your new album. Yeah. So tell me about the inspiration behind this. Um, who were you listening a lot to when you were writing this? So I was just listening to a lot of music. I was also listening to... Who was I listening to? I was listening to a lot of singer-songwriters, definitely. Because um, this is the first album that you know I would be that I would take up a role as producer and um, I was very excited about having to decide you know my own sound who I wanted to collaborate with um, which songs are to be put into the album and sort of like curating everything so um, what was your question <laughs> <laughs> who were you listening a lot to while you oh, were making this album a lot to? oh god um, I was listening to Leanne de Havas I was listening to um, Ed Sheeran, I think, at the time. 
But I don't know if the music really reflected who I was listening to. I don't know. I don't know if, you know, I also tried to just go back to my own style too because a lot of the songs in the album, some of them, um, were actually written ages ago. So they weren't really true to the time that, you know, I was, I was making the album. A lot of them were kind of like my old style and I, and I didn't, I don't know now what the inspiration was for those songs. But so I opened up my song bank from a long time ago and I basically picked from them and yeah. What else can we expect from this new album? Will you be writing English songs? Yes. So there are definitely a lot more English songs in this album. I would say even like close to 50% of the songs in this album are in English. Um, you could also expect very, very exciting collaborations with two male musicians who I adore and respect and I love their work um, and I'm so happy to have worked with them. I'm just so excited, I'm just so excited. Also, I think, I think you would also see a different side of me um, in this album because there are songs that are more sultry and like songs that are more like R&B and songs that are more folky. Um, what do you prefer, acting or singing? Because you've done both yeah. um, kind of alongside of each other. So I get that question a lot um, and I always say it really really depends on where I'm at uh, because I do feel like those two are inherently the same thing in terms of, you know, they're both mediums of storytelling. Um, and they're both mediums of expressing yourself. So um, I like them both, because, and they're very different. But for now, for this phase, mm -hmm. I uh, am really into my music. So I would, my answer for now is music, but who knows, you know, if you ask me in three months, I might be acting, yeah. Thank you, Modi, for your time. Thank you so much. That was Modi Arindo with Jakarta Post.